Bill says the sky is falling because I said, you know, we're going to talk a little bit today about the big change on Amazon this week and how to deal with it, right? Ben Fair says we're here and Everin says, hey, y'all. So, hey, guys, if you are on Facebook with us, it does sound like you can hear us, which is always a great place to start. Give us a thumbs up, a heart, and Mr. Yuck, just to let us know that you are on board with us. And like I said, Scott, I think kind of the big thing that we need to talk about today before we dive into the Q&A in the second portion, and Dom, I know you have a couple other things you want to touch on as well, is that change, that tweak that Amazon rolled out this week that has everybody freaking out. So the, the question I have for you, Scott, just to kind of start this off is, yeah. is the change, what is the change, and is yeah. it a big deal? For, well, from what I, what I gather, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I gather, um, the change is that now you as a customer can unsubscribe to an email that comes to you from Amazon or that seller. So that's that's what I gather. Now, let me just say something, okay? Um, you know, if you are if you're sending any emails in business in general, okay, or if you're receiving any emails in general from anyone that is a business or that is someone that you signed up to receive stuff or maybe you purchased something and you get an email, you you have to, you by spam law, you have to be able to unsubscribe. And up to this point, you really weren't able to unless you complained to Amazon. And I'm not even sure if that would have turned it off. So um, the whole thing in, in a nutshell is, is it's giving the customer the option to, and I hate to say it, but get rid of the marketers that are ruining it for all of us. That's my take on it. It's like if you're going to hammer your your customer that just purchased from you and say, buy more stuff, buy more stuff. Can I can I get a review? Can I get a review? Can I get feedback? Can I get feedback? Like pounding on them and you don't expect them to get upset. The only reason why Amazon is doing this is because they have received probably a ton of complaints and now they have to do something about it. So to me, it's work as usual. It's, you know, give value in those emails and you'll probably not have people unsubscribe to your stuff, period. Did I miss anything? Am I wrong? No. And so here's here's kind of my take on it. And I, I don't know. And if anybody out there knows what criteria they're actually using to filter it out, I, I did a little bit of testing. And when I unsubscribed from the Amazon marketing emails, which is a setting on the buyer side, I stopped getting those. Uh, I tested it with a couple of products that I knew were sending those follow up emails and purchased them, didn't get the follow-up emails after I unsubscribed from that. So this is more, in, in my opinion, this is more of Amazon realizing that it's being used for marketing, which they're, they seem to be okay with, at mm -hmm. least the way that it's being used, because if they weren't, they just would have shut down the service and said you had, they would have shut down the API access, and they would have said, you can only send transactional emails transactionally, right? Now, Dom and I were having a conversation before you jumped on, Scott, and he said, well, does that mean they won't get like order confirmations or any of those kinds of things? The answer is no. They will still get those even if they're unsubscribed from the marketing emails. And the reason for that is there's two different kinds of emails. There's transactional emails, which are related to the transaction, and there's marketing emails, right? There's everything else kind of yes. falls into that other bucket. Yes. And so they've even said, even if you are unsubscribed from marketing emails as mm -hmm. a customer, if there's an urgent thing that we need about your transaction, we're still giving sellers a way to communicate that to you. And that's manually through the interface on the back end. So if somebody's shipping address is wrong or something like that, you can still manually do that. And that lets Amazon know that it's a truly transactional message versus a purchase follow-up message. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes, makes total sense. And the only thing that I wanna say here as well is that like I had said earlier, like it would have been really, really, really bad news if they said, listen, we're not going to allow you to use third party tools to communicate with your customer and we're not going to let you follow up with your customer. Now I'd say you have something to kind of get upset about and be like, oh my gosh, like now what? But they're not saying that. What they're saying is be good to your customer, don't spam them, give them value and you're probably gonna be okay, but we're gonna give them the option to opt out of your stuff. Like, that's it. Like, now some people said, yeah, but that's coming next, Scott. Maybe it is, I don't know. Again, that's why you probably should be building your email list, which we've said time and time and time again. But if you're, if you're, if you're taking your business and only relying on Amazon, you are in a dangerous area. It's just the way it is. It's a great platform. And it's like some people say it's the Amazon crack. 
It's like you jump in and you get you get business. Like it's pretty darn easy to start getting sales if you've done your product research right and if you've done all your marketing right and you know all of that stuff. So it's really cool. It's kind of that's what they said. It's kind of like you know it's kind of like a drug, but really you still should be doing some collection of emails so you have a way to communicate with customers or potential customers and building that audience outside of that. So again, if that does happen, is it going to be a a shock? Is it going to be, oh my gosh, the sky's falling? Yeah, it will be. And I think that that would really disrupt the community. But right now, I think people aren't understanding what the actual thing is happening. It's just them having the option to say, Chris, stop emailing me. You're annoying me. You're, you're sending too many emails. They don't have any value. I don't want to receive them. Please let me unsubscribe. And I, and I want to clarify something. This this is an opt-out not of just your messages from what I understand. It's of all third-party messages from the Amazon system mm -hmm. because both Feedback Genius, I believe, and I know Salesbacker have an unsubscribe link to stop yep. that from happening to begin with. So they were able to unsubscribe from specifically your messages in the past, and you didn't really get any notice of that unless you logged into Salesbacker right. and looked at your blacklist, right? Now – they're saying they're just unsubscribed from messages in general. The thing that the other thing that's funny, the other thing that people were freaking out about for the first two days, like Tuesday, Wednesday, was the email. And I, I've gotten a grand total of one across all of the accounts that I manage. And Scott, I don't know if you got any. Dom said he didn't get any yet that he's that mm -hmm. he's noticed. And mm -hmm. it basically goes like this: it says, uh, "Where's the where's the line that I'm looking for? Um, if you continue to do this, you will be banned." Right? The problem is you don't know that they're unsubscribed until you send them a message and then you get the thing saying they're unsubscribed. So Amazon is aware of that. They kind of clarified that yesterday. And they said, we know guys, we get it. It's worded that way for the future. We're going to be rolling out access to the API so that services like Salesbacker and Feedback Genius will be able to know that and not send that first message. So don't freak out if you get a couple of those right now. Go in manually if you have Salesbacker, Feedback Genius, and just unsubscribe those people so that you're not sending message two, three, however many messages you have mm. beyond that first one, and don't worry too much about it. And it's funny because anytime something like this happens, Scott, you and I have been online long enough in, in terms of the business side of stuff that we see this stuff all the time. And anytime some of these changes happen, it's like, okay, take a breath. What actually is the change? What has yeah. changed? Whether it's Google, whether it's Amazon, whether it's a Facebook algorithm, where any of those kinds of things, these changes happen. It's business. It's no different than if you were, I don't know, Circuit City and Amazon opens, right? Or Best Buy, I worked at a Circuit City. You know, a Best Buy goes in across the street, what happens? It's the same thing. You have yeah. these challenges in business and it's only in your best interest to kind of take a breath, read what's actually going on, take a minute to understand if it affects your business in any way, mm -hmm. and then move forward with whatever the solution is. Now, Scott and, and Dom, I, I kind of want to get your opinion on this. Let's just say the worst had happened. Does that really still, does that change anything in the grand scheme of things other than making it a little more complicated to get reviews if you weren't able to send any messages at all to anybody does that change how you launch a product does that Tom, change Tom, why, don't speak, research? Why, don't, why don't you speak to that to me it doesn't right it's going to reduce the number of reviews that we can get quickly right but to me it doesn't change the products that i'm looking for right it still, i'm still going to be looking for lower competitive products that get a decent number of sales and the number Scott that you and I use are 10 sales a day. And the, the example that comes into my mind is the open brand. Dom, yeah. how many reviews do some of those products have? And this is something we've talked about on, on live in the past, like two, three, right? We weren't even sending follow-up messages <laughs> purely by accident, guys. We just never yeah. turned it on for the first month that it was up. You got to unmute yourself, Dom. I always do that, but at first I want to say that I don't have to do all that those feedback genius stuff because I've got a particular set of skills. So <laughs> because I have because I have those skills, <laughs> my buyers know how to contact me. No, so yeah, I, listen. I only found out actually. Bill Stratwa told me about it. He goes, "Oh, did you hear about all the uproar?" And I go, "What now?" He basically told me. And I go, "Okay, great. Okay, I gotta go. Like it, whatever. It's irrelevant." <laughs> Unless my account is banned, barred, taken off, that's all I worry about. Yeah. You know, all these changes, whether it's a review thing. Yeah, they want to take away feedback. Great. I get to save $39 or $49 a month times every account I have because mm -hmm. then I don't have to use feedback. 
Phoenix. I mean, I love all those guys as sales backer, but that's the truth of it. And what it happens, does help. Yeah. It, listen, I've been successful selling retail art for 20 years on those systems and no, never did any follow up on eBay ever. I mean, come on. It's just, yeah, I think everybody wants an excuse again. And, you know, and I, I noticed some people, even in our, in our groups, our TAS group and our private, you know, our, our meetup group and stuff, people are like, okay, what's going on? Have you had this? They, you guys are already doing well. You're successful. Like those little things. I, I get it. There's always going to be a scare, but I didn't think nothing of it. And if they want to take it away, it wouldn't bother me at all. You know what? They're still going to kind of leave feedback and reviews as they go. You're just not going to. And again, if you're picking the right product, yeah, that's we've key. proven it. We've that's proven key. it two, three times, two, three ASINs already now that you don't need any feedback or you don't need any reviews on the product, let alone have it a follow up sequence. Follow up sequence is great. So you get them to leave feedback so you can. You know, so you can, so you can before say to them, Hey, do you mind leaving a review? Obviously you don't say the word review. We just, we've totally changed our sequence. Like, Hey guys, if you like our product, let other people know about it. That's what we say. Yep. So yep. that would just get rid of that. So I would have to go back every or get my VA to go back every month and go all through the feedbacks, hundreds and hundreds of positive feedbacks and email and that the follow up. Hey, can you please leave a review? Do you know, Scott, right? How we, mm-hmm. how we've learned to do that. So yeah, you know what? It would kind of benefit me in a way, actually, if they took it away. But I, I don't want it to go away. Obviously, you know, it, it helps. It's, you know, but I mean, there's ways to do it. Every every product we have has a, a, a insert card in it already, right? right? Or you put a PDF file with your first email, you know, your sales email, and that's it. They'll eventually get the first one. They'll always get the first one until they, they you know, until they they unsubscribe. So. Well, unless unless they are unsubscribed from the yeah, market. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. First one. But, but if you look I at mean, what Amazon says don't worry about, they have a list of stuff that they consider not to be critical. And in that, and I've seen this question a couple of times, is like, well, what if I send a product manual? I, items that are not considered critical to completion of the order, proactive customer service, including product manuals, tips for using the products, FAQs, and suggestions on what to do if something goes wrong, right? They're saying, don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry too much about it. It's not critical for the completion of the order. There's a, you know, figure out a different way to get to them if you have to. And if somebody has an issue and they don't get that, they'll email you through mm-hmm. the feed, the, the seller feedback. And I get those all the time. Hey, yeah. I didn't get the manual. Yeah. Or they'll just return the item. They'll just return yeah. it. Hey, can I get a return? It's not working. That you don't even know about it unless you check the report. So here's the other thing that I want to, that I want to point out. And it's a great call. And I think it was Charles. Uh, Charles from Dallas, he said, these are the people who wouldn't want to leave reviews anyway. Exactly. Yeah. These are the people that, they're, and you guys have heard us talk about this in the past, whether it's sending Amazon emails, whether it's emailing your list. And Scott, I know even inside the TIS community, you get a couple of these. It's a big <laughs> F you for sending me an email, right? Like, I had a good one today, Chris. Should we share that one I got today? You signed up, you signed up to get messages from me, and then you're like, why the hell are you emailing me? Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. And it happens. it happens all over the place. We can't take offense to that. People will unsubscribe from your stuff. And that's doing the thing. you a favor. They're doing you a favor. Right. Why would I want to talk to you? If you don't want to hear from me, why do I want to talk to you? And that's the that's the like mental hurdle that a lot of a lot of people have. And Scott, you've heard me say this in the past when we talk about building an email list, but I've worked with some people that have hundreds of thousands of emails on their list. And you walk in, you go, okay, how is this list performing? Oh, we don't know. When's the last time you emailed them? Christmas last year. Why? We don't want anybody to unsubscribe. We have a hundred thousand people on our list. Well, if you're not emailing them, they don't exist. And if 10 of them unsubscribe, what does it matter? You still have 900,999, I don't know. I'm not doing the rest of that. 990. Yeah. Nine, yeah. Nine, 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 oh, right? I don't know. I think I threw too many that numbers is. in there, but you guys get the point. So if they're going to unsubscribe, let them. Don't right. worry about them. You're selling other units. There's other ways to do it. And even if the worst happened, we could still ask people for reviews that are satisfied customers. Yep. How do we do that, Scott? We send an email to our list yep. and say, hey guys, we're launching this new product on Amazon, try it out, and then if you wouldn't mind, leave us a review, right? That's totally okay. It's not necessarily gonna be a verified review, but they're users of the product. And we're and not saying we're matters. not saying you have to do that to get, to get a, a discount. We're not saying right. that. Hey, would yeah. you mind? You know, as somebody that loves Scotty V's garlic press, would you mind just jumping over to yeah. Amazon and, and sharing the love mm-hmm. with people? Let people know and let us know how we're doing. That's like you don't like I like I said, Chris, you don't even have to use the word review. You know, right. as long as you like just you said, I, we experience. just say that's what it is. Let everyone like I said, we always say, Hey, we're excited that you bought your product. Great, man. Can you you know, we we want to get everyone else excited about it. Let everyone know what you think about our product. And that's yeah. it. I don't even say good or bad or you know, no, any of that no, stuff no, no, no. I think just, that's that's again, that's where people are getting in trouble because 
you know, people are putting in that email. If you think yeah. we are a five star review, yeah, leave exactly. us one. And if you yeah. don't think we are, email me. Let me know. Like, yeah. no, that's wrong. That is just wrong. take it. See? Whatever they give you is what they give you. Yeah, that's just it. say, go leave me some feedback. Let Amazon know how we're yeah. doing. What you're yeah. saying? Like, it's simple. Um, I, I want to share that, Chris. Um, I'm going to do it publicly. I got the I, I sent out my Friday email and I've got I've got a lot of people on that list, thousands. Okay. And I sent it out. And last week, um, we, we got a bunch of unsubscribes and and I was actually glad because those are people, and I, I say a bunch, I mean less than what, Chris, like a percent three, of a percent. Three cents of a percent. And it was to a list that we hadn't really touched. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a segment of my list that I haven't emailed as much, obviously, because you know, we had some reasons behind it that there was some segmenting and stuff. But anyway, the point is, I said to Chris afterwards, I'm like, they actually did me a favor because I only, it's like, imagine having people at your house and they didn't like you. Do I want them at my house? No. They're it's standing like, I'm, there, I'm, talking yeah, I'm standing there and someone's like, you know, you're a real scumbag. Thanks, man. The door is over there. Like, like that's, Literally, and that's what the guy said this morning. Dom, it was awesome. I sent out the email, right? And my Friday email today was all about um, basically life balance, work and life balance and all that stuff. And um, yeah, read it. there's no sales pitch. There's no nothing in there other than resources of freeness. Like, is that a word, freeness? Free, it, um, is freeness. it is now. It is now. Scotty, Scotty V just coined that that term. It's freeness. Um, so, uh, so, you know, they, I, I email out all of these, you know, basically talking about life and work balance and all that stuff. Because I know it's a big struggle for a lot of people. Then I give the resources for the week and all that stuff. Nothing to buy at all. And you're always going to get people, right? Out of thousands of people, you're going to get people that are just going to be idiots. I mean, they're just going to be. So this one guy just emails and he goes, take me off your list, you scumbag. <laughs> so so normally I would never respond to it. But I, I type back, I go, I, what did I say? I go, um. I go, with pleasure, sir, smiley face. <laughs> and then so he's unsubscribed, but it's so easy to unsubscribe. You just scroll down the bottom, you click that little button and you get unsubscribed. But actually they did me a favor, right? That person I'm not going to be friends with, right? I only want to attract the people. If people think that I have to be in a suit and tie in order to be successful, they're not my right ideal customer or person that I want to hang out with because that's not going to be me ever. So you might want to just go over there with the suit and tie guys and hang over here with the T-shirt and short guys. Um, you, you know, it's but, all year round here. Yeah. So, you know, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I mean, when people are unsubscribing, they're, they're unsubscribing because they don't want to hear any more from you, not just because they don't like you. They just don't want any more messaging. So, you know what? Just, just give them a way to do it. And Amazon is now doing that. And that's really all that the big change is. It's, uh, it's not a huge deal right now. Um, so just carry on, carry on as usual, head down, pick products that don't require thousands of reviews go back to work. Like, just put your head down. Stop going in the forums and the groups and complaining that, oh my gosh, Amazon did it again. It's like, cares. Here's, like, here's the other thing, Scott. Go they're going to keep making it. changes. I don't want to, I mean, let me prophesy for a little bit. They're going to change some other stuff this year. <laughs> Are they really, Chris? Really? <laughs> they're going to? Do... No, really? Really, guys? <laughs> like, what? Okay. You could do that? Yeah, they're going to change that? stuff. You it's could do change. that? I don't know. I, we need to, we, let's, let's change topics, but here's the thing. It's going to keep changing. It's never going to be the same. I know it sounds revolutionary, no right? No way. I don't need, I don't need a stone tablet and a chisel to like throw that out. It's going to keep changing. It you want to hear something? Changes. You want to hear something crazy? Google's going to do some we, changes too. You want to yeah. be in front of a eBay mountain? is? eBay's going to too? Yeah. There's going to be a new iPhone. There's... <laughs> <laughs> down, down, down. Uh, oh, so actually, <laughs> speaking of which, what? There's some changes going on on eBay this week. There is, really? yeah. They're yeah. getting rid of HTML listings, which Dom okay. has spent, you know, some some time and money developing. And guess what his take is on that? <laughs> oh well. Nothing, oh well. I'm still what gonna sell gonna stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like it's it's one of those things where like we can't get bogged down in the minutia <laughs> of these things because in the grand scheme of things. We're going to have to change. We're going to have to pivot. We're going to have to do stuff slightly differently than we did before. And it's like when they made the review change, what was that, August? Well, like, yeah. Like, Scott, you and I sat down, and that was kind of the one that you and I took, like, the hardest instant hit on because we were like, wait, okay, this is, like, what everybody's talking about doing. 
And then we sat down, we looked at how we've launched products and we went, not really that big of a deal. Here's the exact way we used to do it. Before we did it the shortcut way, yep. we didn't have to do that again, right? It's not like it's not possible. It's not like you're not gonna sell products. If you're going after competitive markets, that you have to go out there and hammer promotion after promotion to keep up. I mean, literally people's businesses have been built on doing promotions like every other week to keep them in the rankings. Like every that's day. part of the promo, every you know? Day. What do you mean? Every yeah, other week. so I mean, if you're in supplements, you're probably yeah. in that yeah. space. You know what I mean? Like that, that's part of it. You gotta have deep pockets and you gotta be willing to do that all the time. And then get people that are coming on your listing, leaving negative reviews and your competitors and upvoting and downvoting. And who wants to get into that mess? I don't. Not me. Um, all right, Chris, let's, um, let's uh, get on. Someone just said, don't beat a dead horse. All right, so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and, nice. uh, and move on here. Everin We're talking Thorne, about who moved, or Everin Thorne, sorry, says, go yeah. read Who Moved My Cheese, which if you guys haven't read it, it's a fantastic book. It's very applicable to the situation. Just don't worry about it and move on. Guys, on Periscope, if you're with us, and on Facebook Live, if you guys have any questions for us about this, about anything else that's going on, leave them in the chat for Preferably us. Preferably so not about this. Preferably not about this. I mean, we've, we've kind of talked about and this. Then, I, I don't know what else you would have to ask that we're not right. going to yell at you about for having already answered. Yeah. But if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. And we're going to get to just as many of them as we can. Periscope, cool. give, us, give us some love. Uh, Daryl says, hey Chris, I just want to say I'm sweating in here today. It's really hot here today, Don. Is it balmy? Uh, no, no. Is it snowy? Is it snowy where you are? Because <laughs> I'm su I'm sweating or, uh, right now in my office. I, I have to go to a TFC game after this, and it's going to be outside raining. And, uh, oh, that sounds zero fun. Zero degrees outside. Yeah, it's great. Home opener. Nice. All right, Chris, what do we got? I, I'm just laughing and looking at 75 degrees and sun outside. So I don't yeah, know. Oh, it's cold here. Cheryl, Cheryl says, but, you're saying this is just because of life right? I think the change is the biggest thing I've learned in the past nine months is, is working in retail is that life changes. So let's, let's kind of wrap up on that. Life changes. Stuff happens. Move on. Charles says, what's going on with the PPC training? If you guys weren't on with us last week, Scott and I did kind of wall-to-wall Facebook Lives on pay-per-click, Amazon-sponsored products, and you can find all of that stuff, including the workshop that we did with uh, Jeff and Brandon from Seller Labs on Monday at theamazingseller.com slash PPC. And basically what we do is we walk you through our new way of doing pay-per-click for launches, our new way of kind of looking at all of the data and a, a cool new tool that can help you along the way. And then the other four videos that are included for free in that set are us just breaking down what we did, talked about in the workshop into kind of more manageable chunks. And each one of those has 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour of Q and A at the end. So if you guys have pay-per-click questions, Definitely check that out. Hey, I, I want to touch on that real quick. Um, I talked to Jeff today, actually Jeff Cohen, and um, someone had emailed me and said, Scott, I'd really like some more like tutorials showing us how to set things up. And um, just to let people know, um, they are working on that. And I know Chris and I are going to do some ourselves, but they're definitely doing that. Remember, Ignite is like really brand new. And um, and it's it's kind of, I don't want to call it beta because it's already been through a round of beta, but it's it's coming out of beta. So there's still going to be things that are going to be tweaked and changed and updated by your feedback. So if you have not tried it out yet, definitely get in there so you can test it and you can break it really. And then let them know what you want to see improvements on. I've got, I've got something right now, Chris, I was going to talk to you off air, but I'll talk to you on air. Why not just kind of throw it out here publicly and we can have this conversation. I was going through, I set up a campaign two days ago now. And, um, and I went in this morning and I started getting impressions. I think I had about 15,000 impressions in about two days. That's not too bad. Um, and, uh, some, some clicks, I think I spent like 25 bucks, but it already had suggestions for me. And in those suggestions, there was a lot of suggestions, like a lot of like, you haven't had clicks on this one and you know, or whatever. No, actually, you know what? That was an old campaign. So the old campaign was pulling in some of that data that said, this has been running for 20 days and you have not had any clicks on this or any impressions. Um, you know, we, we think that you should archive this. The problem with that was there was like 900 keywords because it must have been a big campaign that I imported. So I'm sitting there clicking <laughs> archive, 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 oh, archive. Man. So a nice feature would be a list of all of the ones that they're suggesting something and then we can check them all and then hit archive. And I, so, believe, I believe that is something that, the, that they're rolling out. Okay. Um, I know they, they rolled that out for the manual side. So, Scott, like if you just go in and it, it said, you know, you got zero clicks over the last whatever period, you could actually filter by that and yeah. then do the select all and hit archive in the manual side. 
And, and uh, I, I know that part, but I think it would be helpful if the suggestions were all put on one page that you could scroll to. Yeah, I think I like that, that would we be a good should, uh, We should send that over to Brandon just yeah. to give him a heart attack on a feature yeah. suggestion. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, I, I, but I mean, that would make it helpful because right now it's really cool. You're sitting in your dashboard and they give you two at a time. They give you two suggestions at a time. But if you have 800 suggestions, you're gonna be clicking archive, archive, or accept, accept, or decline, decline, whatever. But it'd be nice to see all those on one page that you can scroll, you could select all and then uncheck the ones that you get you wanna archive and don't wanna archive and stuff. So I think that would be helpful. So that's definitely something that we're gonna put through. But again, guys, we're still, we're, we're just still getting familiar with this as well. And we're gonna give our suggestions. Um, I do think it's very robust. It's going to be really, really killer once this thing gets dialed in. But already I'm seeing um, really good results just from the test campaigns that I've set up. Um, but the one thing I would say too, a lot of people um, that they're not doing correctly is they're not waiting long enough. They're impatient. Um, so you gotta you gotta set it and and forget it for about seven days and then come back and then look at the data. You, if you want to peek on it to see if you're getting any impressions after a couple of days, that's fine. Then you can increase your bid. But other than that, let it go. Don't start looking at the data. Don't start getting to you know down on yourself because you're not getting any suggestions yet. Um, it's going to take some time to get in there. And I think that's the big thing with pay-per-click is allowing it to have some time to get the data and then it can decide what to do with the data. And I think, I think that's something that's important to point out because they're not just throwing suggestions out. And I, I think I found the campaign that you're talking about, Scott. Yeah. What they're doing is they're looking at it and they're looking at how important it is to your account and they're looking at how confident they are in the suggestion. So it takes time for them to build that confidence. They're not just saying, eh, you might want to do this. They're saying, you should probably do this, even yeah. even at a 50% confidence, yep. right? Which and it was I'm, like I'm 80 looking at the ones. It was the like ones, 80. The, yeah, these yeah. are both 80. The two that I'm looking at right now are both 80% confident. So they're saying this is really something that you should do based on all of the data that we see. So it takes a little bit of time for for their algorithm to do that, and they're actually rolling out some more suggestions on things as they start to gather more data into the system, yeah. so that they can start to see how things kind of interrelate. And um, the, the other thing before, though, just remind me, guys, before we get off here, I know we're, we're you know, I don't want to run out of time. The other thing I want to do, I want to talk about that price test that I did that I've kind of got some data now. Um, remember the last time I told you I was going to I was going to raise some prices because someone had said, if you do that, you might get better results because then you'll show up with, um, uh, you know, the people that aren't prime members. And they and I don't know if that had anything to do that. And then we'll jump into some Q&A because I got a whole bunch in the queue on Facebook. OK. Um, well, uh, you know, I kind of did that. I let it, I set it and forget it. And I'll just give you an, an example. Um, there was two SKUs. They were variations. And um, what we were talking about before, this is probably going back about a month now, probably like three weeks to a month. Three weeks. Was it three weeks? And, um, and uh, I heard someone say that, you know, we're, we're not hitting the people that are not prime members. Um, we're not allowing them to uh, see our stuff if they're only searching Prime. And also by pricing, if they order over $35, they'll qualify for free shipping. So what I ended up doing is I took two of my SKUs or variations, um, and then from there, I upped the price. And I upped the price um, by about $2. So one of them is like $17.95, which I was only charging $14.95 before. And then the other one I was charging, and the other one is more like a lead-in product. That one there, I raised to $14.95 from like $12.95. So it was like $2 increase. And Chris, my sales have been up. They've been way up. So oh, you're muted. How much? There you go. Um, how much are they up? Uh, I'd have to look at the exact percentage, but I would say they're up at least 20%. And so so here's, here's the question that I have for you, and you may or may not know this. Our kind of speculation on that was, if it's close to 35, it absolutely makes sense. Yeah. The, the place where I'm not sure it makes sense is taking it from 14 to 17, mm. right? Whether or not your sales just went up because it was $17 is kind of irrelevant for that test to me. Yeah. What you would have to see is you would have to see the, because the, the theory was that you would get two people buying two of them, Yep. right? So did your units per order also increase? Mm, um, actually, um, I, you know, I'll have to look at that data. I don't have that off the top of my head, but I don't believe it went up all that much. Um, I think it's that a lot was of the, That's the real win, right? Because if you're, if you're just bumping it to 17, there's a hundred different reasons why that might be. It might be and, and your it could, competition. And it could just be perceived value. It could be, and right. again, and that, that's where I was going is perception of value or everybody raised their prices. Yeah. There, there's a hundred different things, but if you see that units per order tick up, that's where that would really start to catch my attention. Now, yeah. if your product is 33.99, move it to 35. 
Yes. And yes. you're, you are probably going to see an increase because people even, need to add a second if you're charging, to Even if you're charging 29.95, maybe bump it to 35. You know what I mean? Like, just, yeah, it's worth a shot. Um, this is probably something I'm going to, I'm going to pull into splitly and I'm going to do a, a, a real test versus me just doing it and then looking at the numbers. I'm going to probably throw it in splitly. splitly. Test units per order. Like, do they use that as a metric or is it just the total sales? I believe it's just total sales and it, they'll do price too. And then they'll find that sweet spot of the price after the time. And then they'll start using that price at certain times. So basically they'll adjust your price. Maybe it's a different price at three o'clock in the afternoon. And at midnight, it goes to a different price because they know that buyers at night spend less or vice versa. Um, and then it'll start finding that magic sweet spot and it'll adjust it throughout the day. Um, so that's another thing that Splitly um, has rolled out recently. So I'm going to definitely play with the pricing because honestly, I'm making like close to $2 per unit more and, you know, we're selling more and the BSR is again, increasing and we're ranking and you know what I mean? And just to let people know too, this is probably a product that's very, it's really close to like a garlic press. It's like, you know, there's no, re there's other people selling, selling, you know, this product for nine ninety five. You know, so it just goes to show you that, you know, if you have good feedback, you know, if you have a good authority, you know, authoritative, uh, you know, uh, Amazon account, which I do, um, this is the one brand that I started with. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was kind of one of those things too, that I'm not even really actively going after this brand anymore for a couple of different reasons. Um, but, um, I just kind of set and let it go and it's still, I mean, it's still pulling in money every single month. So. Um, yeah, so I just play around with it and that's a good one to, uh, again, just look at price. It's, it's more, it's been more for three weeks, for three weeks at least. And our sales have been up. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be de definitely digging in, but I just wanted to share that with people. Don't just think low price is always going to be the answer. It could be raising the price. Dom, I think you've seen this too, um, with one of the products in the open brand before you, before we ran out of inventory, you, you were more expensive than anyone. For the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know Bill is the same thing. He's more expensive. I mean, he has not competed on price. He he refused to. Um, and he's and he's still done well. So don't just think the price drop is going to be the answer all the time. Maybe to get a quick boost of sales and then bring it back. But I think the perceived value sometimes is is um is something in itself. Um so anyway, I just wanted to share that because um that, that I was just kind of one last note on that, Scott. You know, a lot of times when you and I get questions, people will start it, and this is not to bash anybody in particular, we get this all the time, and we all kind of fall victim to this ourselves. It starts out with, I don't know what's wrong. I have fantastic photos of fantastic listing. You know, it's the Donald Trump, fantastic, right? Fantastic price, fantastic listing, fantastic reviews, fantastic everything. There's no reason it's not selling because we all like our own stuff, and right. we all like our price point. We all like our headline. We all like our photos, but we're not the arbiter of that. The market is. Mm -hmm. And so if we just assume that we're correct, we're probably actually incorrect. I would say in 90% <laughs> of cases, you're wrong. Yeah. Not like terribly, you might be in the ballpark, but you're hitting, you're hitting singles when you could be hitting doubles or triples by making yeah. a couple small tweaks. And so looking at data like you're doing right now, whether you use Splitly or you do it yourself, is one of the yeah. most important things that people can do to boost their own sales. Not just running Amazon sponsored products, but refining on what you have and letting yeah. the data tell you where to go. And it's one of the more like frustrating things because again, just like with PPC, you have to wait mm. for the data. It's not fun, it's not sexy, but if you can boost your sales, tw what did you say, 20%? Yeah, it's close to 20. Over three weeks. So guys, if you're selling 10 a day, that's an additional two units a day, not to do like yep. elementary math for you, but think about how, I mean, that's, that's insane. Over the course of a week, you've added a day's worth of sales. Yep. You, and you what does that do? And, and what does that do for, for ranking? What does that do for more chances of getting reviews now? Because you have more people buying the product. There's a whole bunch that goes into it. And again, you're making more money. So that's the best of both worlds. Um, Dom, before we jump into Q and A, I didn't want to, I didn't want to skip out on this. 1K fast track, man. This 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 uh this group that's going through right now, right? I mean, crazy, right? Uh, they're on fire. There's a couple of people over a thousand dollars already. I, I mean, mean, it's just insane. Yeah, I mean, Chris, I don't know what the total is as of right now. Do you have a, the latest total? Have you looked? The last I looked, we were over thirty three hundred dollars in revenue. I think that um, that was yesterday we, morning. Yeah, we did oh, a little yeah. kickoff. We we did a little kickoff call for that 1K fast track group. And the kickoff call is kind of like a head start. Like you don't even have to do it the first week, but
but it's kind of like us, like let's earn some money before we actually start. And um, it's really simple. Uh, you basically clear out your stuff in your house, whether it's up in your attic, your garage, your office, or someone that you know, and you list it on eBay like now. And we had people that got off that kickoff call. They had stuff listed. They stole stuff before that night was over with. Um, so yeah. the, the so first group got their shirt in like three and a half hours. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and well, what we, what we mean by that for anybody that doesn't know it, and anyone that hits a hundred dollars in revenue in our one K fast track, they get a t-shirt and the t-shirt. You're going to have to order back. more. I think Scott. Yeah, I know. Right. I, actually, actually, I said that to Chris <laughs> yesterday. I said, I got to order more of those things because people yeah. are going to be, be needing them. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm pumped for this group. This group seems really good. The first group was good too. Did over $3,500 in seven days. Yeah. Um, and again, it's just a kickstart to get people started, but, um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of touch base with you and see, uh, see how you're enjoying it so far. We haven't even gotten started yet. This, this Saturday, tomorrow is our, is our yep. official first session with this group. So, um, how you feeling about it, man? No, no, it's looking good. It's pretty amazing. You know, the, there's a lot of guys there, two, 300, 400, 500, 700, 900, a thousand. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. I didn't, uh, Realize so many people will be aggressive, but I think it's it's a really aggressive group. I think there's three, four, five, six, seven people. I hate put all the numbers in, but they all wanna they all wanna you know challenge each other. They're in there yeah. complimenting and, and and cool like that. You know, it's uh it's been good. It's not uh not a lot of haul videos yet or or pictures of that. I want to see more of that stuff because I think the first group before they were showing the old organs they were selling or the, oh, the yeah. old ba baskets. So you, you meant, guys are listening like without a, that. Like a musical organ. Not like yeah, a like a, not not a human, no, not a kidney, no, like okay. a keyboard, maybe a, a, cur, a, a cord, a a cord keyboard or something. Yeah, yeah, not even and some uh, bamboo baskets, whatever. Yeah, so yeah, I know I'm really excited. I think that you know, obviously the alumni group will always be you know our our, our first group, so we still have love for them. But uh, these guys have definitely uh, put up to the challenge that we did, and they, I mean, they obviously there's more people. Uh, it's gonna, sure. you know that could, but I think even the first three four guys I think combined have, have, have broken the 3500. We're probably gonna end up with five almost. It may I wouldn't even surprise by six thousand by tonight. Mm. It wouldn't it wouldn't mm. surprise me because there's a yeah. lot of aggressive guy. I mean, and they're finding some good stuff. One guy sold his iPad. Another lady sold her her uh, you know her uh, Nintendo Wii with a bunch of games for 250. iPad for 400. A guy sold a watch for 300. So I mean, there's some big stuff that's in, sitting at your house. You were like, why leave it there? Get right. rid of it. Pay for the course. Take some money. Get ready, learn to make some more money and move on to private label after if you want or keep doing both. That's what it's all about. You know, yeah. especially it's always been there, right? It's just like, you know, yeah. you're eventually gonna run out of stuff, but we're gonna teach you those guys how to how to move to the next level to to start buying stuff and so but I'm yeah, I'm excited. Can't wait till tomorrow and uh we'll you know, we'll uh we'll be a little more educated and we'll uh, you know what they what they want and stuff, so we will definitely be ready. Cool. G C right. says one K fast track group rocks. <laughs> let's um okay so and i probably should let people know if you are interested in that we're not open right now but we are um we do have a interest list so when we do open and we're not sure when we're going to open that again or how we're going to open it again we're still kind of playing with the whole idea um it's a lot of work honestly because we have to meet every single saturday for the next six weeks so um it's a lot of time and commitment on our part too and in, in, in coaching everyone through this um so anyway uh 1kfasttrack.com is the link you can go there and get on the interest list and um you'll be notified when uh when we open again and um and what's planned in the future for that uh program so um chris let's dive into some q a you got anything there in periscope if you guys got anything i'll try to pay attention over here too a little bit so i can see uh what kind of questions we're getting robert kent says how are you tracking conversions from external traffic uh the answer is don't drive external traffic no i I'm a huge fan of external traffic. I don't drive anything directly to Amazon. And the reason I don't is because you can't track it. Right. Um, the, the way that we're kind of doing that, we capture the email address and then we're sending them a promo code. Obviously we can track redemptions on that promo code. And if you're using an Amazon Associates link, you can track it that way as well. It's not 100% accurate. You're gonna get an 80% idea, um, but at least you know if you have their email address, even if they don't buy anything, you still have their email address and you can market to them long-term. And that's really what the goal is. Amazon doesn't give you any reports for tracking anything other than total sales and sales from pay-per-click. You don't get to know the external stuff, which to me is kind of a detriment to Amazon because there's a lot of us that would love to drive external traffic to my Amazon listing because I know it's going to convert, but if I can't track it, I'm not going to spend the money to do it. Right. Okay. So, and I, I would just tell people like some people that are just tuning in, they may be like, well, what the heck does that mean? Um, we, we did a workshop a little while back, uh, explains everything. Um, it's really about taking external traffic, 
to a landing page, which is basically a place to, to capture an email address before you give them the coupon code, but then you can still drive them to Amazon. Um, and that's the amazingseller.com forward slash build list. So the amazingseller.com forward slash build list. And um, we've got some cool things uh, happening there pretty soon too. At that same link, we're going to be updating that. We've got a whole nother thing we're going to be doing here, which is pretty exciting. So um, definitely go check that out. Um, any other questions? I didn't, I didn't tell you, but I recorded some of that stuff this morning. Oh, cool. So awesome. that'll, be, that'll be interesting. Um, Megan says, using Ignite, I definitely had a problem with my campaigns before. I've had more impressions in one week than I had in the previous five combined. So mm. getting some good recommendations from the sound of it. Cool. Uh, Charles says, I've been working with Seller Labs on a couple of bugs inside Ignite. They're great at responding. Love the tool. Nice. Uh, Sam wants to know what's the new PPC tool that we were talking about. Guys, we're talking about Ignite from Seller Labs. And if you are a TAS listener, which you obviously are, if you're here with us right now, they have a public wait list, but we have a link that will get you right into the tool. It's a 30 day free trial. That should be the amazingseller.com slash Ignite. Uh, and that will get you right in. You can sign up, you can start importing your account today and go from there. And to make it really easy for you guys too, go to the amazingseller.com forward slash PPC and that will be there as well with some resources. Um, the link to, to go right there is, is right on that same page. Plus there's all the resources there that support it. Um, and access to our private Facebook group. Um, there's a private uh, sponsored product ads um, Facebook group that we created for Ignite users right now. So yeah, anyway. Cheryl says there's nothing wrong with a little organ humor. I'm glad Cheryl found that amusing. You know, uh, it was funny. Was my my father said years ago that my my grandfather would have sold an organ just to make a buck. Um, he literally would have sold the tree in his front yard if he could. Um, that was my grandfather. You know, he he was he would go to Salvation Army, buy all his clothes. They'd be too big. He'd wear suspenders because the the waist didn't fit. Um, so that's going back to the the old farmer days. You know, like he would just if someone was like, I really like the bush in your front yard. He's like, it's for sale. How much you want to pay? Hundred bucks, you have it. You can have that bush out there if you want it. So I'm sure if someone needed something that he didn't need two of in his body, he probably would have sold it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, let's see. Cheryl wants to know: Can you say what the cost of the 1K fast track was? I believe this time, Scott, the public price was 347. Um, yeah. We're not early, sure uh, what it's going to be the next time. So yeah, the early uh, the early list got notified early, and they got in for 297. Um, actually, 247, then 297, but the 347 was the public price. Um, and we only opened it to the public for about a day, I think it was two days. So um, yeah, and this next time we're, we might do it a little bit differently. I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but we'll let you guys know if if it's going to be live completely through or maybe. Um, we'll have the modules uh, set up, and then we'll do Q and A calls. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. We're gonna we're gonna figure it all out for you. Um, it's a great program though, and if you want to kick in the butt and you want to start earning some money, it's a great course for that. Our our goal is to have you uh, make enough money in the first seven days to pay for the the course and also put money in your pocket. So that's the goal. GC says on a recent podcast, Scott said we should not pick a super generic product that's being offered on Alibaba for private label. What if the product meets the criteria in regards to demand, depth, reviews, monthly sales, et cetera? So Scott, what he's really asking about there is like an also ran product. So mm -hmm. the same thing that everybody else is selling. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? And then I want to get Dom's as well. My, my thought on that is, is, is I'm not totally against it. I'm just, I'm like, if you're going to be able to get it that easy, so is everyone else. So my thing is, is if you want to test something really fast, um, then do it. My suggestion would be like, if you could find that product and another product, get them both shipped to you, combine the two and make make it your own little package. That's probably a smarter way of doing it. Some unique spin on it. Um, or if you do do that, um, maybe have your own box created or some type of packaging so that it looks different on the viewer or as the viewer is scrolling that it's not gonna look like that same garlic press that everyone else is selling. Um, so that's what I meant by it. I'm not saying that you can't find generic stuff to test, but then you should put your own spin on it, whether that's packaging, whether that's bundling, um, you do need to do something that's going to make it a little bit more unique. Um, so this way here, it's not so easy. Because remember, if you found it easy, everyone else can find it easy. The other the other kind of spin on that, and it's something we talked about either last week or two weeks ago on, on Power Hour, was if you can find something that is a generic product, but apply it differently. And I'm, I'm thinking of specifically something that's in the open brand, right? It's a garlic press to everybody, but it might also be an apple press to help you make apple Yeah, sauce. yeah, yeah. Like that's a good point. Right. 
It's a good point. That's totally cool. And if there's demand for that and you can use it for that, then go for it mm -hmm. because you're using it differently. But still keep in mind that if anybody sees what you're doing and they're a private labeler, that they're going to be able to copy that very easily. Mm -hmm. What we're really talking about doing is setting up barriers to entry, right? And Scott, you and I get asked all the time, like, should I work? Should I just throw out products that are in a gated category? You go, no, put in the two days worth of effort that it takes you to get ungated because that's a barrier to entry against other people. And 80% of people are going to go, don't want to deal with it. Don't want to submit invoices. Don't want to do anything. It protects you a little bit. Same yeah. thing there. If you're creating a bundle where it's a little bit different and it's not just that product, but it's that product plus something else. Even if they're two products that people could find, you just put them together. And that's exactly what Rich Kittle did with his first product. Um, Dom, are you kind of on the same boat there as well? If you can make a change that makes sense, then make a change. If you can use it differently, then use it differently. Don't just go for an also ran product. Oh, Lee, <laughs> I do that every time. <laughs> but learn, man. I man, I just don't want all the buzzing and the people coming in. No, uh, yeah, I, th I think that is absolutely right. The way to do it, you know, it's again, there's some little techniques that you learn as you, you as you start releasing products, you know, to help you get better at that, you know, bundling or adding up or doing the different variations. You know, my only take with that, I always say to everybody, you know, here or that we work with or that I talk to in the TS group. You know, it's just always add some type of variation, offer more than two to three, maybe going with a lead price point. So it helps you out. So one lower, one mid and one high. So you get yeah. three and then maybe times two different colors or sizes or kits or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So that'll change it up a little bit because most people just go in generically, just throw one in. Because what's going to happen if you just throw one in, you're going to start at 14, you're going to be at 799. Yeah. You know, you might yeah. as well already start at, you might as well just start at 799 with with one and then have you know have multiples do your, your twos at 14.99 your four pack at whatever offer color their size variation small bigger that type of stuff or one like this and then one with another variation two different things to go with i it think and, the other thing know. i'd like to i think the other thing i'd like to highlight though diamond this is something that we just recently yep. did in the open brand is if you find something let's say is generic and it's used for yep. like chris said garlic pressing yep. but you could press something else with it, or in, in our case, we're using it for a different purpose than what it was created originally for. Yeah, yeah. But now you put a spin on that, and now you say, this item is for this, but really it was created yeah. for this. Um, that way there, you're, you're able to put your own spin on it. It's unique now, um, and um, everyone else is trying to go after the garlic press, but you're really using that as you know how to press yeah. something else. Um, so that would be that example. Yeah, I, I mean, repurposing, repurp repurposing a product, that's right. what I call it. I don't know, repurpose. I mean, we, and even in Oprah brand, I think we have three of those. But again, you can't make a whole brand about that. It's going to be very difficult to find a market that you can repurpose something and then nobody's really in it. I mean, right. even the ones that we repurposed, you know, we're not the only ones in the market, but, you know, it, it's, we've changed it up. We've, off, we've offered different variations of it, different price points, where yep. most people just come in with one, maybe two, where we're four colors, or five deep. Colors, yeah. yeah. Colors. colors, sizes, quantity, yep. all those three things. Yep. I, like, I've like i always stressed, anytime you release something, if you can, unless it's at high end, you know, unless it's something like, you know, like Jared's $35 cost product or $40, like you're not going to start releasing two of those at right. once, you know. Right. To, but if you're if you're buying stuff for three dollars and it's gonna cost you five to do a two pack or six dollars to do a three, then have those options if you can afford to always vary. Because then, first yeah. of all, it'll help you it'll help you get it'll help you get your sales volume up right away because you're going in with an eight dollar price point at fifteen right. and a twenty dollar that type of price. So anyway, and that's an, that's, that's an easy it. way that's an easy way to be different is to just add different quantities. Um, if you have something you can buy in, like you said, you buy one because you, you just want to, if you're going to do it, you might, if you're going to buy one, you're going to have a SKU that has one, but then you're going to have one with three and you're going to have another one with yeah. six. Yeah. So that's an yeah. easy way to have different bundle options with just the same single product. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, I mean, a lot of times if they say, look at, you have to buy a thousand units at $3. Okay. Can you make a hundred of them singles? I want 400 mm -hmm. of them in two packs and I yeah. want a 403 packs. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with like a, it's same thing with a t-shirt. Like I've been buying t-shirts for, for TAS yeah. stuff, right? I need to buy 50 shirts or 75 shirts, but I can mix them up. I can do five yeah. small. Yeah. I can do five medium. Yeah. I can mix it up any way I want. I just have to come up with 50 units. Yeah. Um, for quantity, they're good. 
Yeah. Now, if you want to change size or color, they they won't let you do that because you have to buy a thousand of this color, a thousand of that. Right. But if you have exactly the same thing and you want to bundle it differently, and yep. again, it's not really doing anything. Maybe you don't need a hundred. You want you know just put it thirty three, three hundred thirty three, three hundred thirty three, three hundred thirty three, whatever you want. You know the big okay. bundle I would do the less of. Okay. Cool. What do we else? What else we got, Chris? We got to wrap up here soon. But what else we got? Yeah, it looks like we got one last question here from John. Steven, he says, I have a parent listing with four variations and good reviews. I'm about to introduce another product that could be listed as a fifth variation, but could also be listed on its own instead as a slightly different buyer type. What should I do? Dom, my initial kind of reaction to this, and I want to get your feedback, is do both uh, listed as two different products, which is kind of <laughs> something that you've done in the past. Is yeah, that you could do as that. long as it is a different buyer and a different way that you would market the product? Yeah. Listed if, as if a you can, product, yeah. If if you can afford the if you can afford the quantity to do both, or you know if you want to split, if you got a thousand units, you could do that. Uh, listing it by itself is a good way too, because then you take up more space on the fold or on the the top seventeen, depending what category you're in, obviously. But top seventeen is usually the norm. So yeah, I mean you could do that. We've done that before. I mean I I most of the time when we do that, we don't add it to another. We'll actually start another three four variations of exactly the same product and just have a change our brand name or. Sometimes we don't even change the brand name. We just don't, whatever. It depends what it is. Depends how much money we want to put in or time or effort. Because a lot of times when you've done it, you can just say, yeah, yeah, can you just make these these for me, please? Uh, yeah, leave the name and ship them to me. Then it's nice and easy. You can still, and you take up more page. But yeah, there's variations where you could do both if you wanted to. Hey, um, I got a question here on Periscope about yeah. packaging. Any recommendations on packaging as far as where to get your packaging? Um, my first thing is, is um, I mean, there's a couple different places you could use. Um, and this again is going to be just to kind of get your feet wet and kind of maybe if you don't want to, I mean, the first place is to use your supplier, right? Your manufacturer probably has a print shop right next door. They'll get you as many different kinds of boxes that you want. They'll even customize boxes for you. That would be the easiest way because then they're going to do it all for you. If you don't have that luxury or if you're not buying enough, then you're going to have to do it locally and you're going to have to get the product and put them in the package yourself. Um, and and a, a simple way of doing this is getting a generic box, but then putting a custom sticker on it of some kind. Um, and I would say Uline is, is a place you can get boxes. Um, I've even, I've even found, um, boxes at places that sell stuff for like restaurants, like restaurant mm -hmm. boxes and packaging, like donut boxes and stuff. Like you can go there and buy really nice boxes that are meant for food mm -hmm. and you can put your product in there and they're usually nice. Um, sometimes it's like really nice chocolate with a hard box and it's for like a yeah. gift. Um, so there's a lot you can do there. You might spend a little bit more because you're buying lower quantities and you're not going to get custom printing on them, but that's an option. Um, so that would be like my way of like, like the easiest yeah. way to do it is like Uline is, is a good place. Um, and then like a place that sells restaurants. Scott, packaging. I was always, yeah. I was always, I was going to say a really good place. Holy, that's a lot of feedback. Uh, I was going to say is I know they have it here, you know, a bunch of the, basically they're, we, that's called creative bag here. So they sell stuff for weddings, for stores, you can get your bags, your generic bags, and they have yeah. boxes for everything. Okay. Now they're a little more expensive, but you can buy fancy jewelry boxes, top mm -hmm. layers, you can buy foam insert boxes, you can buy whatever you want, open window boxes, you can buy those cake type of boxes. The problem with those cake thing is, you know, obviously you've seen a cake, you can't sell right. much heavy in it. Right, but, right. Yeah, yeah. And if you look, there's tons of corrugated cardboard wholesalers. You can even buy the stuff on, on eBay if you want cheap enough. That's there's true. wholesalers everywhere. Yep. So I mean, don't worry about that. But 99% of your stuff should be done overseas because you're not going to get the price. You're not right. paying 10, 15 cents a box times 1,000 boxes in the U.S. And they're, or Canada. And they're printing it right, and right there. And one little tip, because a lot of people ask, they're, they're yeah. like, well, I'm only buying 250, but they want me to print 1,000 boxes. Well, here's what we've done. Right. Print the thousand. Yep. They're only costing you 15, 20 cents a piece or 30 cents a piece. Tell them yep. to only use 250 on your order, and then the other ones they'll store for you until your next order. It's a simple exactly. way to do it. Um, and yeah. that way there you can at least get those the, that those custom boxes printed. Um, Chris, what else we got? That's it. On That's going to wrap side. it up. All right. So um, Facebook, you guys, um, make sure that you share this, like it. If you're watching on the replay, you can still give some Facebook love. We would appreciate that periscope you guys can do the same um we're gonna wrap it up again the last thing i want to leave you guys with i wrote an email today if you guys did not check your inbox i did send you an email um and i talked a little bit about um work and life balance um i think it's a thing that we all struggle with especially if you're a family guy like myself and um you know you're getting pulled in a hundred different directions um or maybe you feel guilty for working right now because your daughter or your son or your kids are 
coming home from school and you want to spend time with them, but you know that you got to hunker down and get some stuff done. Um, sometimes you got to be able to sacrifice that time, you know, because you're trying to build your business. There's a balance and you're constantly going to be probably pulled. Um, and I felt like that. And I still feel like that today. I actually wrote about that. I was getting ready to um, uh, get on with my day. It was about nine o'clock. And my, my wife's like, I think I'm going to go over to lunch with my daughter or with my daughter, with our daughter today at, uh, at 1130. And I'm like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'd really like to go to that. And, and she's like, oh, you don't have to. I know you're busy. You got stuff to do. And, you know, we got a busy weekend and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And then I said, I don't know, I'll think about it. And then I started thinking. I'm like, what, what in five years, what will I be thinking? Like, will I be thinking to myself, I'm really glad I got that one thing done in an hour that I could have got done? Or would I, will I regret not being able to just eat lunch with her, even though I spent a ton of time with her and I never miss volleyball and all that stuff. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. Like I'm going like um, I can I can do this stuff later, you know, and, um, and I had that conversation with myself. And I just want people to understand that there is some some life and, and work balance there and you have to decide. But I think if you also structure your day and allocate certain times, you just know that that hour block is going to be devoted to that thing that you're working on. If that's to build your business and that's what it's got to be. Shut off Skype, Facebook, any of that stuff that's going to uh, disrupt you and um, and just get get to work. Um, but just understand that that is going to be a struggle. And um, it's funny, a guy uh, sent me in a voicemail on Ask Scott, and it wasn't really a question. Um, it wasn't a question about Amazon or anything like that. It was like, Scott, how do you balance, you know, work life and and like, how do you like do it? I mean, through through the years you've done it and it seems like you've been pretty successful at it and you're still a good husband and you're still a good father. Like, how do you do it? And, and um, he wanted to have me on a podcast that he was starting. I said, why don't we do this? Why don't you come on my show and interview me and we'll we'll do like a like a like a joint little podcast here and he's he did so we just aired that this past wednesday that's 339 episode 339 check that out um it's pretty interesting um and it was fun to go through that because there's some things that i didn't even realize until i went through it so definitely check that out but um that's my message um it's going to be tough there's going to be struggles there's going to be those things tearing at you but um just try to figure out what you want to do schedule it. And then once you schedule it, just lock into that. And then personal time is personal time and work time is work time and side hustle is side hustle. Um, so that's, that's my parting words of advice. So Chris, we good? Let's shut her down. Dom, we good? Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to my lovely wife who's the backbone of everything. She's with the, hasn't been around lately cause she's with her, her, uh, my mother-in-law who uh, went for major surgery last week. So I want to give her a shout cause I know she'll be listening at the hospital. So, uh, I love you, and uh, we'll see you at the soccer game tonight. There you go. The, there it is. Keep going. It's all, uh, it's all about the family, right, Scott? It's all about the family, Chris. 100%. 100%. If you, if you, you lose know. that focus and you start doing it, um, you're going to look back and say, what the heck was I doing? What Did that really matter? Yeah. Uh, but you got to have that balance because if you don't, then That's what? Right. Uh, you don't get to build that lifestyle. So there's got to be that balance. But anyway, right. um, yeah, and I know, I know you've had a, a, a really rough couple of weeks, and um, – you know, I, I definitely feel for you and I've been there and I know what that feels like. It's not easy, but um, you guys are strong and you got a strong support group. So uh, we're yeah, definitely thanks. rooting for everyone in your family. So thank um, you very much. Yeah. So. All right, guys, that's uh, pretty much going to wrap it up. Facebook. We'll see you guys later. Periscope will be right with you. And uh, yeah, put the fist in, fist it, fist it, fist yeah. it. And uh, we'll see you guys later. And Chris, if you want to go ahead and uh, shut down Facebook and uh, we'll wrap this baby up. Have an awesome weekend, guys. We'll see.